Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Uh, I'm going to do a few videos today, try to at least continue on, if not wrap some of them up. So this one I'm going to do is continuation, probably just the part two, um, maybe a part three or four down the road. If I find some extra stuff, I don't know. But of the seven inch 45 singles that I, I started a couple weeks ago and didn't finish. So, all right. So I have XTC, which I haven't done any videos on XTC. I don't know how many times I've shown that much of their stuff, but I do have some XTC, a fair amount of XTC. So this is No Thugs in Our House, which the truth be with XTC, I've grown to like them over the years, but my knowledge of them is... I'm not like a... I'm not, I don't know every in and out. I mean, I could name almost their whole catalog off my head, but... Their songs, I've obviously never seen them live or anything, but this is an interesting song, so I'm trying to see when it was released. 82, so, I don't know, was it English Settlement, or might have been, I can't remember, Mummer. That's the thing, my knowledge of all the XTC stuff is sort of, it has its limitations. I'm still learning, I'm still kind of understanding. But yeah, this is just, it does have all the label, at least it does have, and some interesting different artwork on each side. That one is like a house, someone's pants so but it's called yeah chain and then chain of command limelight and over rusty water this is really more of an ep than a single because it's got cause side a is no th thugs in our house but um and look at you got the pyramids or whatever <clears throat> so yeah it doesn't say the record though produced by steve lillywhite interesting i don't remember where i got this but um this was a quite a neat find i didn't pay a ton for it and given that you know that's the case. Um, this would tell me. I don't know. I don't, the, the sticker doesn't even give any indication. Even the year <laughs> might have been 2015, possibly. But um, but yeah, it was 82. So Let's see. Moving on, I have. And again, I don't have these totally organized by artist, but this is also XTC. It's a picture disc for Wonderland. It's, it's the same place I got this. I don't know, I might have got this in, when we were in Chicago. I know there was a place when I went to Chicago and we saw the Monkees a few years ago that had a lot of XTC stuff. And I've seen XTC just about passed up on, you know. But this is uh, Wonderland and Jump. It's a picture disc. This was 83, so again, I mean, it's before Skylarking. Um, you know, there was the Big Express. I had to pull up the XTC catalog. Mummer, those early 80s XCC albums, they, they were pretty prolific in the early 80s. Um, but it's kind of a cool picture disc. I don't know if there's anything more to the jacket. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this, this, this jacket, no, there's not much to it. No, there's nothing to that, so just a way to protect it, I imagine. But, um, yeah, Wonderland. Again, I don't, you know, the other thing about these songs, they're not ringing a lot of bells, so I'm wondering if they were separate, like that that 7-inch, the, the previous one, no, Th no Thugs in Our House, and even this, might have been, like, B-sides or, like, stuff they released separately from their, from the the the, the full lengths they, they put out at the time. Like I said, XTC... They were a prolific band, especially at the point that they stopped touring. They probably did more studio work. So, all right, here is, um, I don't remember where I got that. This might have been from, might have been that, that oh, Eclipse Records in St. Paul. That's true. Um, Queensryche's uh, I Am I and uh, Bridge. At one point, I didn't have Promised Land, the 94 Queensryche LP that I like so much. These are two songs from it. Um... Nothing special about the, the artwork or anything, unfortunately, but... Um, so I remember I got this. I don't know if it was the same time I got it, but... You know, the, the Queensryche period that I, I really was a fan of. You know, the 80s and you know, up to the mid-90s, so... Alright, so next... Biffy Clyro's Black Chandelier Live. And this is a splatter... Uh, again, this is at Eclipse Records. I might have got this on record sort of City of Dr of Dreadful Night. And, you know, I'm looking at the... I cannot read the date on here very well. I have to take my glasses off. It doesn't say. It was late 2010s, I assume. But, you know... Oh, wait. I didn't actually think to look. 
2013 actually. So actually this was the period of time I was still pretty fanatical about Biffy Clyro. I still like them, but um, they're the last say six, seven years, even though I love Mike Vinard and I'm really happy he's gotten that gig with them. He's been with them for over 10 years as a, as a live touring musician, but I don't know if he's play, ever played on one single recording of theirs. But but yeah, I think this was so Opposites or the one after Opposites. Um, album version of Black Chandeliers. I'm trying to remember the name of the album that came up after Opposites. Only Revolutions, all the opposites, which one, I think it was Only Revolutions. One of them followed Puzzle, because Puzzle's my favorite, and then the one at, the two after. It might have been Opposites. Um, anyway, but it's kind of a cool-looking record. I didn't pay a fortune for it, so Biffy Clyro, uh, Black Chandelier. And it's a live version. I didn't even realize that. Um, so, actually, Vinard is on this. So, technically, he's been on some of the recordings, it's just not in any of the studio recordings. <laughs> it's wrong about that, so... All right, so now I have Josh Rouse's Julie Come Out of the Rain. Which my wife is... A, this was a record store I, I'd... Um, like, possibly the Briffy Clyro was like 2013 or 2014. I remember the first few years I went... I'm going to record store day with my wife. 2011 going on forward. We did end up going to Eclipse Records. So this was at Eclipse 2. And, I, you know, I really... I like Josh Rouse. I've seen him with her, I don't know, four or five times. Follow him and... She, she, He's one of her favorites, but I mean, I've grown to really... He has a lot of good songs. And his, like, um, 1972 and especially um, Nashville records are among the better records of the 2000s. The 2000s, actually. But yeah, this is a great track. I think off of um, uh, Happiness Waltz. And then Is There Anyone There is the B-side. So I don't know if this is someone named Julie. <laughs> the cover art, I'd have to read more about it, but... Um, so, yeah, Julie Come Out of the Rain. And Happiness Waltz, I would say, since those two records in the mid-2000s. Oh, there's something in here. Maybe like a download card or something? Yeah, I think it's a download card. Uh, get Free Music, Rouse. Um, yeah, Happiness Waltz is my favorite record of Josh Rouse's. Uh, Josh Rouse, if you don't know him, he's a, sort of a singer-songwriter, kind of folky artist, but he's done a lot of other stuff. I mean... My wife sometimes compares him to Paul Simon, but he's don't. He's more diverse. His music's a little more diverse than Paul Simon, I would say. But um, she's not even into Paul Simon. But um, but yeah, he's good. I mean, he's you know he's just written a lot of great songs. But Happiness Walls, the last record actually has grown on me a little bit, and he's got some project called Isla or Isla or something like that. Isla, I think it is. That's a different kind of music from his traditional sort of again sort of it's layered. Almost folk soul. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Julie Come Out of the Rain from Josh Rouse. Um, another seven. So here's my Coheed and Cambria Welcome Home. Welcome Home, the second track off Go to Apollo 1. My favorite, and mo a lot of people's favorites, Coheed and Cambria record. It's, again, standard black. Nothing amazing, but it has, you know, a track from... Like the Queen's Reich uh, seven inch I just showed, it's a track. It's got the crowing, also on it, uh, live at the Starlin Ballroom. Which, if I'm mistaken, the crowing came comes off the previous record, um, uh, in Keeping Secrets. But uh, yeah, this is comes with Welcome Home that been used in some movies and everything. And if there was one most well known Coheed and Cambria track, it probably would be the crowing, or be, be, be Welcome Home rather. So this. And, you know, again, this record. And I got it at Cheapo, it looks like, for about $6 a few years ago, back in 20... Again, these were all, like... I, I, I haven't been buying a lot of 7-inch uh, 45s in the last few years, but a lot of these... This came out in 2015, I bought that, so... So here's Jeff Buckley's Everyday People, a cover... This is a record store day, I might remember, around that same time, 2015. Um, let's see here. And... Yeah, the cover of the Sly and the Family Stone, which I, we just saw Summer Soul, which Sly and the Family Stone did an appearance at that festival in Harlem, in New York City, um, back in, was like, 71. That was a really, you know, like, moving, uh, entertaining film, documentary film that, that uh, Questlove made. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely see if you can check it out. It's the Black Woodstock, you call it. I don't know if that's the exact way to describe it, but... 
there's tons of diversity on that on that build, but and one of them was flying the Family Stone. So, um, so you get both the Jeff Buckley cover, and uh, which is from his record You and I, that posthumous one of the you know many, and then also the the standard version from Flying the Family Stone, and it's one of Jeff Buckley's photo. No, my bad. Anyway, you got Sly and the so it's kind of, you know Sly and the, you know everyday people everyday people. Um, uh, a, cla a classic and then a, a great cover. So I remember they did this for... Again, they're kind of um, trying to come up with things that will, you know, draw people in, that people know this song, and so they hear Jeff Buckley do it. And I don't remember if I've got the um, version that he did here. I mean, it was on You and I, but it might have been... I may have heard it before then, like on, on bootlegs and stuff like that, but... Um, yeah, and so a lot of this stuff is from, like, Record Store Day 2015, it looks like. Either Record Store Day or maybe Black Friday Record Store Day, so it would have been April or or, uh, or uh, November. So, okay, and I've got, I know this is a, kind of a big deal when this came out, Faith No More had broken up, of course, the band with Mike Patton from the 90s, mostly. And they were in the 80s, too, before Patton, Patton joined in, like, 89, but... They went on a long hiatus, and people wondered if we'd ever get Faith No More music again. I have some Faith No More. Maybe I'll show it at some point. I have, I'm a Faith No More fan. And Mother Effer, as you can see, this is a song from the, their... I think this came out This came out before their album Soul Invictus, which I think was like 2017. I remember. No, it was 20... This came out in 2014. Wow. Um... Yeah, wow, I, I was thinking it was more recent than that, but I remember I liked the last Faith No More record. I wasn't, like, you know, blown away or addicted to it. It it, it didn't, it's, I don't know. It was refreshing to hear some new music, but ultimately I didn't go back to it. You know, it happens sometimes. That's happened with a few artists. And then at some point they release another record and that ends up, you know, like, who was it, Big Wreck did that and a couple others. Their second follow-up was better. But anyway, Faith No More, Mother Effer. Um, Matish Yahoo. Matish Yahoo is an artist I was into for a brief while back in the mid-2000s. The Pure Reason Revolution, the same people, the same person that was really recommending or was into them was also really into Matish Yahoo and that album Youth that came out and The King Without a Crown that off the live at Stubbs, I think it was. I listened to a fair amount back in like 2006. Um... This I never even opened to, but this looks like it's King Without a Crown, and the youth B dub version was the B-side of this. Matish Yahoo. I don't know, at first, Matish Yahoo was, like, uh, doing, like, um, well, he's a fish fan. So, like, jam band music in Hebrew. <laughs> That's not exactly the description. That that would be, I don't know. It's it's more, I guess there's a reggae element to Matish Yahoo. I actually had this big poster I got from Zia Records that I kept. I think I eventually got rid of it. But there's just it's just your standard black. But yeah, Mati Shahu. I still like him. I never got that into I mean it was sort of a novelty. I, I think the novelty wore off to an extent, but that youth album I think I still would go back to and then the live at Stubbs. That song King Without a this song, King Without a Crown is still a you know one of the better songs over the last, you know, twenty some odd years. I'd put it in the top five hundred for sure, if not higher than that. So um, here is from 2009, I think it, that's when it came out, All Is Love, um, from Where the Wild Things Are soundtrack, and it has Hideaway as the B-side. This is from Karen O of the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, or I don't know if it's, they're still together, Yeah Yeah Yeahs. And I, this was, the, the film was directed by Spike Jones, who I was into all, some of his films. He also did Her, which I never got into, I was kind of bugged by, but, um, and I know, I think he was, if they're not still together, but... Uh, and I, I had this on my top, whatever it was, 15, 20 records from 2009. It's kids' music to an extent, but it's just very melodic and playful and memorable. And the movie itself was be very much channeling childhood nostalgia for me. And so I, I don't care what kind of music it is. If it, it evokes some kind of emotion, it's going to be uh, something that I enjoy. I don't think I would listen to this. I still I haven't listened to the all, like, the... Why Where the Wild Things Are soundtrack much since 2009, unfortunately, but it's still a great tune, you know, this specific tune, and um, I probably should go back to it more often, so. 
All is Love from Where the Wild Things uh, Are soundtrack done by Karen O. And Karen O and Kids, as it says there. So, uh, let's see here. Local Natives. Uh, this was uh, a remix of Fool's Gold. Um, a Fool's Gold re remix, rather, by, by Fool's Gold, uh, the song Eyes Wide, uh, featuring a pop bottle. Interesting. And then the B side on this is um, another Fool's Gold remix, but I think it's a band called Free Energy. Anyways, we're getting sirens. It happens once a month here. My apologies. I think that's sirens. It's not an emergency. Hopefully, <laughs> you never know. Um, and I, it doesn't even say the year on this. I don't think. I want to say this was sometime in the early 2010s too. I can't remember. Eyes Wide Shut might be on the second. Eyes Wide rather, because it's not on the debut album, not on L L uh, Gorilla Manor. So um, I should know that the local natives catalog by heart as much as I'm a fan, but. So here's a song from the, th the motion picture, The Hidden, which I think I bought that this primarily for that reason. It's done by, it's called, let's see here, It's Hidden, and Roy Thomas Baker, which I thought he worked with, yes, I could be wrong on that, I think he did. And then Dennis Herring and with Shaba Petos did the song Respect, but um... Yeah, here it is. At least it has the artwork. It's from the 80s. The, the movie The Hidden, late 80s. It had Kyle MacLachlan. There it is. And was it Michael Nury, I think it was? I think it was Michael Nury. About an alien that kind of um, goes from body to body. It has... I think it also has... It's a name from Babylon 5. But anyway. I'll have to talk about The Hidden. Some people don't think it's cheesy. I personally thought it was really good. The second one was just okay. But I'll... I don't know if I've got the DVD, but... I should do like I when I when I get around to do it when I get around hopefully I will get around to doing more things on movies and, and television and stuff like that. I would put the hidden in my like probably top fifty sci-fi movies, probably in the top thirty. You know, there's a it's a cool movie. It's an adventure movie, as much as it's sci-fi and futuristic and for the the time it was, you know. I like Kyle McLaughlin in that probably better than I liked him. I I haven't spent that much time watching Twin Peaks, but um, anyway, the, the thing is this band, you know, I, I don't even know the musicians that well. Roy Thomas Baker, again, I mentioned, I think he worked with Yes, but I don't know what he's known for off the top of my head, so. All right, moving on. Yeah, I think this is just the monthly sirens that we get. I hope this isn't too distracting, but, um, Surge Tanky, and again, these, these sleeves are not... You know, I maybe you should just pass on trying to pull all these things out. Well, I actually could just pull it out this way. Oh, this one is worth showing. Kind of. This is, um, let's see, from Empty Walls, from his debut album. His, um, and it has the Victoria Victorious Club mix, remixed by DJ Lethal Rush. Um, I think it was called Elect the Dead was the name of the album, the first album he put out. And, Unfortunately, I love, I love, I'm a System of a Down fan. I have some of their records and some of their CDs, and I saw them live with the Mars Volta back in 2005. That's a concert memory maybe I'll do at some point. But, uh, sir, and he signed Fair to Midland. That was the other thing. And I got this, I don't know how I got this. I got this at the, they did like a screening of like a documentary he did or something. I don't remember. There was a connection maybe with the Fair to Midland fans. I got this. I can't remember, but I got this at when I was at Lagoon Theater. I remember that. Um, so I didn't even pay anything for this. I don't think, you know, because I, I just I like his music, but it got it's become so political it kind of distracted from my enjoyment. the The system of down stuff doesn't go over the top for me with the politics as much, at least for the most part. Anyway, this is Empty Walls from System from Serge Hankey and of System of a Down. Um, so here's the next one, and we're getting pretty close to the end, I think. It's signed in Minneapolis, as you can say, uh, by St. Vincent. This is, uh, Now Now and All My Stars Align from the St. Vincent's debut album, uh, Marry Me. And I think I got this sign when I saw her at the Cedar. I want, I have a memory of, t of talking to her most at the Cedar, mentioned Dream Theater and King Crimson to her because she's a Crimson fan. 
I've kind of jumped ship, unfortunately, with St. Vincent, and her music has lost me. But the, the first record especially, I still enjoy a lot. A little like OSI. And it's cool that I got this, you know, that Now Now's a great track, and All Stars Aligned as well, and they got signed by her and everything. So, the St. Vincent fans, none of them all of them had that, I'm sure. So they're probably, they would probably, the, the fanatical St. Vincent fans would, would be interested, would be envious, potentially. Um, so I have The Police as Spirits in the Material World. Um, with the B-side, Flexible Strategies, I'm not sure if that's the name of the label. And the B-side is, no, that's the name of the song. That might be off of, I don't know, that's, I think that's a B-side, I don't think that's on Synchronicity, so. Spirits in the Material World, um, wait a minute, Spirits in the Material World's off of, uh, not, not Synchronicity, but, um, Ghost of the Machine. Interesting, 81. But I'm not sure, like, the trackless strategies might be a B-side, Flexible Strategies, so. Spirits of Material World, though, I would put among my top five police songs. I love that track. The little synthesizer part in the bridge is just oh, it's so soothing and like dreamy and like escapist. Um, which is like a huge theme for me sometimes with music when it's like I feel like I'm escaping. I don't, I don't have to worry about where I'm at. So, um, let's see here. Khaki King. Um, come pull me out alive. I got this at Half Price Books. I didn't. Yeah, again, this was probably a very affordable um, record to pick up. Um, Khaki King, who I'm sort of a, a mild fan of. Yeah, you know, it's white. Pull me out alive, and then Zeitgeist is the B side. As you can see, um, year is escaping me. I want to say this is around 2010, but it might be older than that. Um, cause she's been around, yeah, 2008, I was off by a couple of years, but it was pretty close. I have a couple of her CDs, I saw her live, I think only once, maybe twice. I think I saw her open for someone, come to think about it, but I can't remember who. But she's a pretty talented, you know, technical acoustic guitar player, does like tapping and stuff. Um, there's more to her, and I, a concert story I could tell when we saw her at the Cedar with my wife. Um, but anyway, I got her, uh, um... Pull me out a live seven inch here from Half Price Books a few years back. Uh, Judgment Day, who I'm wearing Dredge today, they opened for Dredge. That was mo the most the initial time I probably saw them or heard about them. Maybe it was before then, but I got to be a pretty big fan of Judgment Day. They're um, a cello and a violinist and a drummer. They they're very metallic sounding. They're all instrumental. Um, this is a song called Out of the Abyss Live on Tape. And the, the B-side is e two, and it came out... Unfortunately, the sleeve is impeding my vision here a little bit. It probably tells on there, but it doesn't... <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to find out. I'd like to, you know... But they, they opened for Dredge... 2008, maybe? The, their 2010 album, Something Peacocks, was their peak. I have, I think I have everything by them, and they did a Kickstarter for their next record. 2009, so. Um, but yeah, if you like, like, the comparison is a little bit like Apoc Apocalyptica, but they, you know, Apocalyptica got known for their Metallica covers. Using cello in a very metallic way. The, a lot of energy, a lot of flow. Um, the Peacocks and Monsters, whatever the name of that album, slash Monsters, is terrific. Um, one of the best instrumental records of the last couple decades. Um, and um, they were a good fit for Dredge because I think some of the members might have played on Pariah record. Because I think it was maybe before that. Maybe it was, they hadn't released Pariah because Pariah came, Pariah the Parrot the Illusion came out in 2009. I think they maybe toured with Dredge in 2008. Anyway, so they played, because there were some string arrangements on number Dredge albums, but that album had some, and these little, like, movements and stuff, and they may have, and they may have had some of the members of Judgment Day to, um, guest on that. So, yeah, I'm gonna just pull this out. This is Jimmy Necco's Bring, Bring You Home, yes, with pat Patiently Waiting as the B-side, which, I know Bring You Home, Patiently Waiting, if I had to, to name how it, to describe it, I can't, I can't remember, but thick vinyl, though. Bring you Jimmy Necco's album The Heart came out the so, first solo album came out in two thousand wasn't it two thousand nine? Yeah, I think it was two thousand or maybe it was two thousand ten and then he released this. He released that on vinyl too, and yeah, this is twenty ten too. Then he released the whatever was what, the X edition, which was a different track list and they had the the full R's band members play with him. But yeah, Bring You Home is a great track, one of the better tracks on 
um, the heart. So, okay, I think this is my first, maybe one of my first uh, seven inch singles. This is The Doors. The Doors are Hello, I Love You and Touch Me. I probably bought this when I was about 13 or 14. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, the record's damaged, so this is probably kind of doesn't have a lot, other than for sentimental reasons, a lot of value because it's, it's gone, unfortunately. That happens, you know. Again, I, I like The Doors. The songs are, aren't bad, but I don't know if I... I'm, I'm saddened beyond this is off of the, whatever Electra Asylum spun gold. Um, I'm not sad, too sad that I'm, that this, the condition has gone down. So, anyway, Peter Gabriel, um, Shock the Monkey, and Soft Dog picture disc. Shock the Monkey, Soft Dog. Again, it says limited. Uh, it's interesting what it says there. I think I found this. I might have found this at um, in Bloomington Discland before they closed. Cause I found a bunch of like the Jane's Addiction. I found there, and I think I found this there. You see his picture. You see his picture disc. And you see his singles a lot. And I probably could have bought. I, I could have at least five, six, seven more um, Peter Gabriel forty uh, fives between twelve inches and and the seven inches. I just I I'm not. I don't always. I save money. You know. I don't want to buy everything. You know. I probably should have. But I love Peter Gabriel. Although his solo music, I'm less enthusiastic about than obviously the Genesis stuff. But. Um, anyway, that's one of the one Peter Gabriel seven inches I have. It's a picture disc for um, Shock the Monkey from the early 80s. Was that off, I think it was off Peter Gabriel 3. Shock the Monkey on security or 3. I can't remember. Anyway, the Helio Sequence Converter with Menomina's Pilgrim's Progress. And this came out, this was right around the time of Menomina's album, um, uh, the third proper full length, which I'm, I'm spacing on right now. Um, the last one with Brent Knopf. It's the second to last, but I, I let's see, I don't know. And the little sequence are a band that I saw live a few times. I mean, I, I like them. I've never gotten fully, like, into them, into them, but um, um, I think I found this. I might have found this. It was either a record store that I had them, or I might have found this at Treehouse before they closed, but it, it says 2010. Okay. So... Um, yeah, and there's a download code actually on this, so. But why am I spacing on the Monomino? So it was, yeah, it was the same year of, um, the last Brent Knopf Monomino record, which I, I almost actually did that today. I was going to do a Monomino video. Um, so I probably should, I will do that and I'll mention that. It wasn't Friend and Foe, it wasn't the, the debut album, I'm the Fun Blame Monster. It's the one that followed that. Which I do have on vinyl, but I'm just spacing on it at the moment. Pilgrim's Progress, I don't think is on that record though. I could be wrong, but I think it's a, that's one reason why I bought it because it's like it's a song that I hadn't heard. But you can see the artwork is interesting. I didn't really show that clearly. So and then this one is kind of similar in some ways artistically, but I don't. I'm trying to figure out who this this is from. March Residency Grumpy Saturday Free. I'm thinking this is an ad for a show that was stuck on. A, and this is a limited 61 out of 100, so this might be a local Minnesota band. There's like a couple seven inches in here. Headwinds, headwinds and hosiery, and put a new fang in the tone arm cobra. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's kind of an interesting cover, although it's a little bit overdone, I guess, if, if for my taste. But this is a mystery because I've never listened to it, of course. There's a place called Grumpy's in Minneapolis. It was. Yeah, because this says 2011. I don't know if I got this as a gift or... I might have gotten this as a gift. The B8K of... Oh, my bad. Now I feel really stupid. I know what this is. This is this local band. It is local. Book of Right On. The short-lived band that had like a, a really cool like Primus slash... I don't know... Uh, King Crimson Element. They had, they had these two drummers that were amazing. This guitarist was amazing. I was totally excited about this band, and I have their only full length on vinyl too. This was an, an extra track that came with it. But the Book of Right On. They had a story of a lot of band members that had been in previous bands that didn't last, and it was the same case. And for they had a second record they were going to make. It, they were one of the coolest progressive bands in Minnesota for about a two year period. I I was almost to the point where I thought this was going to be my favorite band in town here. And I saw them the night I couldn't get into Jethro Tull. And I saw them with, 
uh, was it Goddard Dam? Not Goddard Damron. Um, uh, the band that um, Zebulon Pike, who I've I'm not into, unfortunately, but they were on the same bill as Zebulon Pike, Book Book of Right On, and I was just floored. I, at the, I went to the Triple Rock. That was a great concert story. I'll have to elaborate on later, but. This is their one of the they're probably their only seven inch single that I know of, and this is when they they printed it for the show on, on the back in March of 2011. I miss those guys, but it was really short lived. I only saw them I think live twice, but I'd be curious on what they're doing now. So this is also among my earliest, like the Doors one, UB40s Red Red Wine. I th in fact I think this is the one I was thinking of. Suffering is the B side, but yeah, Red Red Wine was all over the place for about a two year period, like late 80s 88 89 90 party music you know you know ruby 40 sounds like reggae and everything but um nostalgia just like the the doors one let's see here lifter uplifter hey you records uplifter records hey you i don't know if that's the pink floyd tune or a different the album lifter from the album lifter uplifter rather published by hydrophonic and then the other side, the B side, I like the way by C Sexton and D Martinez. I'm also being thrown off by this. Whether I bought this, yeah, produced by Bob Rock. The band's called Uplifter, so I have no idea how I got this. Someone may have given it to me because the name. I'd have to look that up. Maybe I knew this band. Maybe I. They were probably on the bill with another band. That was my first guess. Or I got it as a as a promo from someone at a store. Nothing special about it other than the fact it's, you know, this turquoise or teal color, but I don't know. I don't know if I paid any money for it. I would guess I did not. Um, Eau Claire, the band Graf, who was out of short-lived also. Of course, that's pretty much the story with most of the music I life that's not on a major label. Um, this the band Graf, B-Wolves, B-Wolves, and Eau Claire. So... Graf, I don't even know how to describe them again because it's been a long time since I've listened to them, but I think it was around 20, 2009. I discovered them and they had like one other EP. Um, yeah, I mean, they gave me, I think I ordered this. Come to think about it, yeah, like I found it online and I was like, and it wasn't a lot of money. It was like $5 or less. And I was like, I'll support this band because I know they like reached out to me. This has the lyrics and stuff. Is it prog rock? I don't know if you'd really call it or post rock. I don't know. I mean, it's Eau Claire Wolves, you know, Bandcamp, yum. It's interesting. There's the download code. But anyway, Graph, I can't tell tell you a lie. I did like them. This EP was one of the better EPs from that period of time, the late 2000s. Um, but I was listening to so many different obscure bands. They were one of, you know... They make, uh, uh, you know, 100 Foot Snowman seem like a household name <laughs> in some ways. I mean, there was, of course, the band Note, too, who I did turn on to a bunch of people. They put out one record, it was free, and it was amazing, and that was it. So, um, interesting artwork from Graf. Maybe they were a little bit like Menomina from Come to Think. It was sort of a mathy kind of thing. I don't know, I'll have to revisit them and, you know, talk about Menomina soon, do a Menomina video, but... Looks like I got three left, so down the, the home stretch here. Um, I think this is the local band, Brute Heart, yes. Recorded at Mike Wistie's at Albatross in Minneapolis. I have a lot of local seven inches because you can find seven inches. And Brute Heart are no more. They're a little bit like Warpaint. They're an all female band that had like a Jefferson Airplane thing going on. They, they used, they featured uh, violin um, and, you know, vocal harmonies from more than one female, you know, female singer, because they, um, I saw them live, like, three times, uh, they never fully, I mean, they did get somewhat popular locally in the Twin Cities, but I know they did some touring, but, um, I know Jackie Beckett, um, Jackie Becky, rather, um, she ended up going on to, uh, go, moving out to the, out to LA, I think, but she's doing music out there, but she was, a like, a, she still, she has her librarian degree, just because my wife, Found out, you know, found out through circles. And was actually working uh, at the same place with her for a little while. Anyway, um, yeah, this is this is their song, Miladies. I don't know if that was it. Recorded. At, it's like a live recording from Brute Heart. I have both their full lengths. They only had two. I think it was two. And then they did that film. They did a synchronization performance. That's the last time I saw them. 
at the Cedar Cultural Center where they played the, played along to us uh, like their soundtrack was to this silent film from like the 20s Caligiri Dr. Caligiri anyway and here's another one right here Wildfire from them I forgot how many uh yeah, I was buying all their stuff trying to support them and stuff version is the b-side but um they should have opened for war paint that would have been great <laughs> or even genders or Catherine Paul's new band Black Belt, Belt Eagle Scout would be great but anyway so it looks like I got yeah, two left one uh, police wrapped around your finger, which I love Spirits of Material. Well, wrapped around your finger is from Synchronicity. And this, if I had to choose one police song of the last decade, this is probably my favorite. The B-side is Tea in the Sahara, which is another song off Synchronicity. I don't know if this is a, this is a live version of Tea in the Sahara, so, or the Sahara, Sahara. But yeah, has the artwork, I snatched it up, you know, I don't know if I've seen this in the 12-inch, too, but... So I have basically two of my five favorite police songs on 7-inch singles, which is great. Um, and then Local Natives. Another Local Natives one I have. The Union Line and Camera Talk, which... Camera Talk, if I'm not mistaken, is from the debut album, Gorilla Manor. But the Union Line and Mama Don't Care on side A. But my guess, this came out right around the time of... Grill Manor in 2009 or 2010 when it got more distribution. Yeah, I don't know what this thing is like. A, I get a download code or something like that. <laughs> Interesting message on there, but yeah, local natives uh, band. I'm I'm still very much a fan of. Um, although I will confess that the last few times they played live here, I I didn't go. I was I was going to every one of the shows. They were originally known as Cobble at Rest. I'll have to do a video on them at some point. Um, cause I kind of consider myself at least one of their earliest fans. I'm not their biggest fan maybe now, but I still love all their records. I mean, I, every record I enjoy, I think I have every one of them. I bought the last one, but yeah, the, um, local natives, I go back when they were Cobble at Rest in 2007. And so that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making it through this marathon of the second part of the seven inch singles and, and give it a like and subscribe and see you next time.